least, after the service is over, then we'll be able to post the whole of the video and you could watch the rest of the service at that time. All right, with those administrative things addressed, we move to uh, next week's worship. Next week is Welcome Back Sunday, traditionally in the calendar year. And um, recognizing that we may not have too much longer where the weather is good and that we do have a number of people who are more comfortable coming to church when we're outside, we are going to, weather permitting, have another outside service. Because of COVID restrictions, we will not be having a barbecue this year. Our fellowship will be contained to during the worship time, um, but uh, we do hope you'll come even without the additional draw of the good food that is normally shared. <laughs> and there may be a little surprise as well. Now, I said earlier that we will be doing the blessing of the backpacks during our Welcome Back Sunday uh, service next week, but also in recognition that there may be some families who feel more comfortable uh, staying away from the larger crowd. I will stay around after the service from about noon to 1 p.m. in case there's anybody who would like to come by, bring their backpacks, or you know, maybe for the teachers, their like, briefcases or what have you. Um, to receive a prayer and be blessed for the school year. Now, this is a time of year where, and, and um, sorry, I'm adding something to that slide that's not written there. Um, this is a time of year when normally the church would have been collecting school supplies for interim place. And we have made attempts to reach out to them. Our contact there has left, and so we're in the process of trying to connect. But we do have another group of children that um, we could be caring for, and that's the children whose families rely on support from our food cupboard. And now, the time is short. And so what we're asking for, for those who feel able to do so and who are available this week, um, to take care of this, is if you were able to make a cash donation towards purchasing um, gift cards so that the families who rely on our food cupboard can purchase the school supplies that their children need, um, we would very much appreciate that. And um, uh, Gloria and Carleen, are of course, uh, with Sarah's support will be, uh, and Mark's support will be spearheading that effort. So if you have cash that you'd like to donate today or if you're watching online and you'd like to drop back through the week and make arrangements to um, uh, make a contribution to this effort, that would be so much appreciated and you can speak to any of those folks. Continuing on the topic of children and youth amongst us. Baptism planning, I made this announcement last week as well, that if there is anybody who is thinking about baptism, and I'm saying children and youth because that's the most common thing, but uh, of course if there's an adult uh, that you know or you yourself have not been baptized and are interested in that, please speak to me directly as soon as possible so that we can make plans for this fall's baptism preparation program. Family ministry in Sunday school, um, this announcement was made by Jane last week about how an email was being sent out and has been sent out regarding how the church can best serve your family and the school-aged children's faith needs and interests. And so if you haven't heard from, the, uh, from Jane by email, then please do contact the church office and leave a message there for her. We thank as well all those families and other church members who have been um, praying for each other through the summer season and hopefully there will be an opportunity to come together face to face in the near future. Our garden group. Our garden group has been in the news. <laughs> um, we were one of several churches featured in the latest issue of the Anglican Journal newspaper and um, it's the Growing in Creation articles of the September issue. Now, I thought this was a good opportunity because the conversation comes up now and then with people that the Anglican and the Anglican Journal 
used to be mailed out to every person who was on uh, a parish's membership list, and we would periodically have to update the list. And a few years ago, in an effort to save money and also for the good of creation, um, they started a move towards digital issues. And they did ask people that if you wanted to continue to receive a paper newspaper, that you should let them know. And if you were happy to receive a digital copy, that you should provide your email address. And I know every now and then I encounter somebody who says, oh yeah, I used to get that paper and now I don't anymore. I guess they didn't respond <laughs> in the time. So if that's you, if you used to get it and you don't, and you're interested in either getting a paper copy or uh, an emailed copy, do please either reach out to them or get in touch with me to find out how to connect with them so that we can get you back on that list. There's always really good information about our diocese and the wider church um, that is good for you to know and hear about. And every now and then, our parish will be in it too. And that's kind of exciting to see your friends in print. Um, by accident, the wrong spelling of Ruth Hay's name was given, but I understand there will be a correction in the next issue. So look for that too. <laughs> No big deal, but it's good to get these things right. <laughs> All right, we asked you a while ago about what had you been doing this summer and would you share it with us? And I understand we have a photo montage to show.
I think I'm right in acknowledging Susan Mason and Sylvia and Bill, Sylvia and Bill all for working on that photo montage and thanks for providing us with some musical accompaniment for it as well. That was really lovely. And thank you all for submitting your photos of what you did this summer. There's definitely some stories to be shared, isn't there? All right. Now we're at the time of birthdays and anniversaries, and we already recognize that it's Rob's anniversary today, and see Andre coming forward to share something else with us. Good morning, everybody. Uh, birthdays and anniversaries. I'm going to go first with those that have submitted online, and I hope I pronounce names correctly. So Jerzy Katalowski had a birthday, and Miriam Sanka, Scania, uh, Jane's daughter, turned 29 last week. Excellent. And I see Ruth Hay had her hand up. Happy birthday. <laughs> Today, happy, back in Jamaica. Happy birthday, Margaret. Anybody else? Yes. My youngest brother is 66th birthday. Today, 66th. Happy birthday. Is he here or in New Brunswick? New Brunswick. Okay, great. Of course, you'll all have to send the links for the service to them so that they know that we prayed for them. Anybody else? Um, anniversaries, so you heard Rob and Sheila had their anniversary um, earlier this week. Ken and Peter and Mrs. Mullins had their anniversary on September 2nd. Um, they celebrated 57th, their 57th wedding anniversary. And Father David and Jennifer had their anniversary on the 3rd of September, I think it was, and they celebrated 38 years of um, togetherness. So, happy anniversary to them all. How many years? Oh, okay, sorry. So th for those who didn't hear, that was Bishop Fenty and Mrs. Fenty celebrated their anniversary on Friday. They will, they will be. Oh, they will be this coming Friday. Okay. Perfect. Well, let us pray for all these folks who are celebrating such milestones and happy occasions. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, you gladden our hearts with the yearly celebration of birthdays and anniversaries. Thank you for the mercies and gifts of the past and our hope for the future. Pour your love upon those who celebrate this week. May they grow in grace as their years increase and ever live so as to please you in the power of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand for our closing hymn as you're able, Shine, Jesus, Shine. <laughs>